So I'm just going to record the process while I watch this together. Um, this is a little bit more complicated because I did a composite. Essentially, I combined between three and four photos together to create the final product because the pose does not exist in real life. And so what I'm doing here is using Gravit Designer to make basic shapes, uh, geometric polygon shapes, um, right now just in outline and making all the shapes that I know I'm going to need. And then I go back in and change those. You can see uh, a piece of art that I did before, and I'm grabbing some of those colors. Um, the uh, eyedropper tool in Gravit Designer makes it really easy to grab colors that are already present in your document, just like in Photoshop or Illustrator. So you can see here I'm kind of tidying things up, um, tightening up those basic shapes that I made. Then I go just to the next um, area. So I know that part of her hair is going to be in front of her face. I did that. And then I do the back part of her hair that goes behind her cheek and chin there. And I just move it all over holding shift so it keeps it lined up with the reference photo. And you can see how I just cropped her, uh, the, the head shot, and got it positioned and sized so that it would be uh, in good proportion to the other images um, that I'm using here. And so it, this was kind of for fun as a, as a joke, but um, I also really wanted to show the process of the, the shading and the layering that I do. So here's one thing that I do a lot is I'll get my base colors down and then I'll use a semi white and semi or semi transparent white and semi transparent black to do the shading. Now, if the color changes, uh, then I'll choose different colors for, for, for those areas. But if I'm just changing the tones, like for her skin here, I can layer those up and build them up without having to go in and, and, constantly be finding colors. I just use a, about a 20% transparent white and I can layer uh, shapes on top of each other and that builds up tone. So if it's highlights, I'm using white. If it's shadows, I'm using black. As you can see here around her eyes, that's just a semi-transparent black on top of the uh, base skin color. And uh, a lot of times I'll just eyeball it and then freestyle and even change things or reinterpret things as I see them. Um, it doesn't always have to be exactly what I see on, on the screen. In fact, it's not going to be because this is a very stylized um, illustration style. You know, I'm only using straight lines, only doing ge geometric shapes, only using poly, uh, polygons, to create these the 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 illusion of recognizable objects and faces. So, as you see here, I'm um, I'm needing to to see more of that uh, suit of armor for the stormtrooper. And here I'd use the different photos you can see for the legs. Uh, this was actually a costume of Elastigirl, and I wanted to have Elastigirl's kind of um, hips and thighs for this illustration. So. This is the composite that you see, just made up of three or four different photos. So I created a base, which was just that black, because there's that, that black uh, like bodysuit underneath the armor pieces. So I used that as a, as a base, one, to help give myself a guide to where all the other details are going to go on top of. And then I go back over, and you can see here I just I chose a gray, which I end up changing later on. But um, again, that's that's kind of the beauty of vector graphics is that you can create the shapes and then choose the colors later on and then remold the shapes just like clay. Nothing is ever set in stone. So I'm just going around uh, the helmet, going around the, now now the pieces of armor, I did completely freehand, freestyled those. I didn't have a reference for um, the shape of those legs with armor on top. And now I'm grabbing um, the boots from the other image. And then I, I just duplicated one and rotated it or, uh, or flipped it horizontally. Now I'm doing the same thing again. I'm going in with different tones. So I'm using a semi-transparent white. It's about a 25% transparency. You can do this in Google Drawings as well by selecting that alpha channel, pulling that slider down. Um, 
and you can do this. You can do the, the great thing about this kind of style is that you can do it in Illustrator. You can do it in in uh, Gravit, like you see here. You can do it in Google Drawings. You can do it in Corel Draw. You can do it in Inkscape. You can do it in uh, just about anything that gives you vector tools, the ability to, to push and pull things around, and layer objects on top of each other. So uh, just can continue going further and further in making smaller and smaller shapes on top of my larger shapes. So what you can kind of see here is that I, I, I create things in kind of large chunky areas and then hone in a little bit further and then hone in a little bit further so that by the time I'm done, these end up being very, very detailed without taking a whole long time to do. I don't get caught up on the real nitty, nitty gritty uh, granular details right away and then not have you know the whole silhouette of the the character or the model I, I try to get that done first and build the whole thing in sections as you saw me doing start with the head then did the uh, shoulder and torso then did the legs and then start building all the details on top of those areas it really makes it a lot easier for me to make selections and move things over when I have something to move them over to and to line them up to. So getting all of those big basic shapes done first really, really helps. Like I said, you can always go back in and refine. And so you see me doing some of that, going back in with some more details. Uh, a lot of times I'll just make my shapes like I, I started out with the face. You just saw me making shapes just with an, a simple outline so that I can see the image without the color fill covering that up. Then I move things over and I can change the colors after the fact. Adding in a transparent black here for some uh, tone from shadows and shading. And again, making smaller and smaller shapes uh, to, to create the illusion, to create the illusion of depth. And you see me zooming in and out quite a lot. So I do that just to check my reference, be able to see everything on the screen. Also, how uh, sharp some of those details need to be. It helps me adjust things without being so focused in on one thing. I can see the whole composition together. So then I just saved it out as a high resolution PNG. Now I'm going into Google Slides because this is where I had uh, a previous document set up already. And I use Google Slides basically as a layout tool. So my, my design workflow has really, really simplified to creating, uh, and I just called imagery because that can be photography, whether it's stock photography or I'm cutting images out or it's illustrations or this vector style. I create my assets and my imagery. And then all I really need then is a layout tool that allows me to position things, um, overlap things, move things around as you can see what I'm doing here on the screen and then add some text. So I already had that kind of set up as a template and I'm using this uh, template to achieve the final result. And there it is. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that helped show you some of the process. Some of those small little pieces really make a big difference in the, and then using semi-transparent colors to build on top of each other so that you're not constantly spending time going in and trying to find just the right color. If you're just wanting to add shadows and highlights, use a semi-transparent white or semi-transparent black for shadows. That uh, will really help you, I think, one, be able to uh, create that illusion of depth as well as save you time hunting for colors all the time. So thank you guys for watching. Bye for now.